In three, we're going to do this show. Coming down in three, two, hit the music. Opening music can only mean one thing. We're going to see some Dodger games on another station besides Sportsnet LA this weekend. We'll tell you all about it in just a few minutes. Hi, everybody. I'm Randy Tibbins. You know who you are. Come on in, pull up a chair, sit down, relax, and let's talk Dodgers. This is the best, only, and first video podcast by fans for fans of your Los Angeles Dodgers. And I'll tell you what, we got a lot to talk about. Uh, big four game series opening up in Pittsburgh tonight. We'll tell you about that. Got some fun stuff coming up. Got some shout outs. It's also Flashback Friday on Let's Talk Dodgers. Can I get a shout out for that? Yeah. Flashback Friday, baby. All right, let's do it. June 24th, 2016. I'm Randy Tibbins. Come on in. Pull up a chair. Sit down, relax. Let's Talk Dodgers. On Wednesday night, the Dodgers face the Nationals for the final time this season. I think we'll be kind of sad to see them leave. And uh, Dodgers swept them, and there were some crazy plays in that last game. First, how about the foul ball that Agon caught two inches from the ground when Utley missed the play, and he kind of got it off of Utley's glove, and right next to his ankles, Agon kind of picked up. If you haven't seen it, go check that one out online. It's pretty wild. Um, he knocked the ball to Gonzalez. Gonzalez caught it inches from the ground, saved a, a kind of a play right there. In the bottom of the ninth, though, was the big one. Uh, Dodgers behind. Howie Kendrick on base. Puig. It was unbelievable. Uh, broke into a sprint at first base after uh, Taylor overran the rolling single to left center field. Kendrick scored easily from first. Puig dro- dove home to beat the Braves. I mean, beat the Braves. Beat the, the beat the throw from the outfield. The Dodgers have now won six straight, five in comeback fashion. Completed a sweep of the NL East leading Nationals. That's unbelievable. And let's hear that play because Vin Scully called it great. And uh, we want to hear as much Vinny as we can this year, right? So let's do it right now. Here's the walk-off hit from Wednesday night. The Dodgers, and this is how they swept the Nats. Ground ball right by the diving Espinosa, stopping at second, and the ball goes through Taylor's legs. Here comes Kendrick to tie. Puig is on his way. The relay is double touch. Can you believe it? The Dodgers win it for the three. Michael Taylor, who struck out five times tonight, has the error that kills Washington. The wild horse had a chance to run and run. He did. First, he was happy over the base hit. Then he saw the ball get by Taylor. And then the wild horse just kept on going. Loved it. That's pretty crazy stuff. You don't see that every day. They're calling it a little league uh, uh, home run. Well, it really wasn't. It was a single with a couple of errors. But anyway, crazy play. But the Dodgers swept the Nats, one of the best teams in baseball. So that's, that's saying a little something, I guess. I mean, I don't know what you guys make of that, but I'll, I'll take a sweep of the, you know, one of the best teams in the National League any day. All right, um, injury reports and other moves. Hunjin Ryu, and remember, we're all calling him Ryu now because it's not really pronounced Ryu in Korean. Anyway, Hunjin Ryu was roughed up in his Thursday night rehab start for AAA Oklahoma City. Uh, his return from last year's shul- shoulder surgery has been beset by numerous setbacks, as you know. He allowed eight runs, five earned, on ten hits, two homers, in four innings, he was expected to pitch five against Round Rock. In his latest rehab attempt, Rue has made six starts with a four and a half ERA. <clears throat> Not great, but I'll tell you what: Tommy John surgery, shoulder surgery, any of those kind of major surgeries, you got to try and uh, do what you can to come back a little slowly. They don't want to rush a guy like that back. Although we we hear we might be seeing these you know him before I don't know maybe the All Star break. Meanwhile, uh, Brett Anderson is on his way back. We don't know about Alex Wood, but injuries to all these guys, Brett Anderson, Alex Wood, Brandon Beachy, Frank Montas, Jose DeLeon, have led to the use of guys like Bolsinger, who just went back down, Julio Urias, Ross Stripling, and scheduled for Friday night, we'll tell you about it in a few minutes, Nick Tepish. That's unbelievable. They brought that guy up from AAA. Uh, in that move, though, they had to designate somebody for assignment, so they DFA'd Will Venable to make room on the, for the, on the roster for Nick who starts Friday night's game against the Pirates. Venable was signed by the Dodgers on June 14th, you may remember, and he went 1 for 10 with a double and a run scored in six games. The move brings the Dodgers' pitching staff back to 13 
on the roster right now. I guess that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Let's do some fun stuff for the weekend coming up. I'll tell you about all kinds of cool stuff happening, particularly two big nationally televised games that you can watch anywhere, and that'll be fun. Uh, fun stuff. I'll start balloting. Don't forget your ba ballots. you got six more days. Six. And I'm up to 20 times on my second email address. You're allowed 35 each email address if you got them. So, uh, so I've, I've voted 55 times already. As long as I get somewhere between 50 and 100, I'm good. Uh, but we've got to get Corey in there. Corey Seeger's, I think, I think he's still riding in third place among shorts. So I've got to get him in there. If not, if he doesn't get voted, I'm almost positive he's going to get you know, put on the on the list for reserve players for the All-Star Game. And I'll tell you why in a few minutes in our stats section, all right? Got some shout-outs. Let's do some shout-outs to everybody. Those are always important. She didn't hear it last time, so I want to give it to her again. Shout-out to Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa, for watching Let's Talk Dodge and telling all your friends. Uh, let's go with Ron S., Ron A., Matt U., Aaron. Aaron knows who he is. And Vanessa. All right. Shout-outs to the gang. If you would like to get a shout-out to Let's Talk Dodgers, write to us on our Facebook page, make a comment, make a like somewhere, write to us on our U Our Facebook page, by the way, is Let's Talk Dodgers, simple as that. Our YouTube page is Let's Talk Dodgers 13, and we do take comments there. You have to log in, though, if you have an account with YouTube. And uh, at uh, Let's Talk Dodgers, at Randy Trumpet on Twitter. Uh, you can write to us the old-fashioned way, also preferred, Let's Talk Dodgers, of course, at gmail.com. That's Let's Talk Dodgers at gmail.com and we will write to you and give you a shout out maybe even if you write to us on our email address we'll send you a Vin Scully uh, home run call, how's that? would that be cool? alright uh, what a fun stuff we got here pass the shouts, question of the house what do the Dodgers have to do to propel themselves back into the playoffs? I asked that the other day on the other show uh, or can they even get the pieces to do all that? we don't know I was listening to Dodger talk the other night and I, I know Tony Gwynn Jr. said well we need an extra bat in the lineup maybe I don't know, a heavy one? Well, if Corey Seager gets hot at the same time as Jack Peterson gets hot, at the same time as Howie Kendrick and Agon and all those guys get hot, I don't know if we need another bat. Some people have said Yasmani Grandel is not the best catcher. We should have A.J. Ellis catching more. I don't know, because if Grandel gets hot, you know what he can do? He can hit the ball out. So I don't know if it's that. Or do we need more relief pitching? I would buy that. More relief pitching. You never have enough pitching. Pitching, pitching, and more pitching. You need arms. And in the late, area, late time of the season – Guys get burned up. Guys get hurt more. We'll get some guys back in the starting rotation. But how about that bullpen? we got to keep those guys healthy and get more arms. I think the Dodgers may be going after Araldis Chapman again. Remember the Yankees got him after he had his you know, legal problems? The Yankees are sellers at the, at the deadline. I think the Dodgers might go after him again. Maybe just to keep him away from San Francisco. I don't know. We'll see. Because San Francisco's up to, for getting some, uh, some pitching help, too. All right, um, stats of the day. I love the stats of the day. This one's from Elias. This is a great one, too. I like this. In the 100th regular season game of his major league career the other day, Corey Seager went 3-4-4 for four with a solo homer in the Dodgers' win over the Nationals. Through 100 games, this is pretty impressive. Through 100 games, the rookie Seager has a 301 batting average with 20 home runs, 64 runs scored. Over the last 60 years, only four other players have had a 300 batting average with at least 60, uh, 20 home runs and, and 60 runs scored in their first 100 games in the majors. You ready to name those four? Here we go. Orlando Cepeda, Carlton Fisk, Wally Joyner, and Ryan Braun. That's some pretty heavy company, although we know Brian Braun was maybe cheating a little. But anyway, Wally Joyner, Carlton Fisk, Orlando Cepeda, and Ryan Braun, and now Corey Seager. Have had 100 games and they've hit 300 and had 20 home runs and 64 runs scored. That's amazing. Way to go, Corey Seager. I got to tell you, that is an amazing accomplishment. And I hope he keeps up in the second half as well. All right, that's our stat of the day. This date in Dodger history, June 24th, we're going way back there. Let's go back to 1947, which will lead into our Flashback Friday. Showing his explosiveness on the base paths, you know who I'm talking about. Jackie Robinson steals home off Pittsburgh left-hander Fritz Ostermuller in a 4-2 Brooklyn Dodger victory. Robinson went on to steal home 18 more times during his career with Brooklyn. Wow. In that game, though, on that day, June 24th, this date in history, 1947, Pee Wee Reese hit a home run, and Ralph Branca struck out four and went all the way for the complete game. And, of course, Jackie Robinson stole home to give the Brooklyn Dodgers a 4-2 win over Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh? We're playing Pittsburgh, so maybe there's a little 
magic in the air. We ought to beat these guys. Of course, we should anyway. They're not doing that well this year. Anyway, for our Flashback Friday, we have none other than a, a great color picture of the man himself who broke the color barrier. And this one's in color. There's Jackie Robinson in color. You don't see too many of them in color, but there he is. Great shot. Anyway, Jackie Robinson is our Flashback Friday guy on Let's Talk Dodgers. Let's get you out to the ballpark. And this is where some of the crazy music comes into this, this show today. Uh, first of all, like we said earlier, right-hander Nick Tepish. He's making his 2016 debut with the Dodgers. He's going to go up against right-hander Jamison Tallion. He's 1-1 one one with a 3-5-0. For that game and for the Monday game, you might want to check uh, live stream app and website because I don't know if they'll be on TV. It's going to be on uh, Sportsnet LA, of course, here in Los Angeles. But Saturday, as we opened the show with it, that was MLB on Fox openers because Saturday's game is on Big Fox. It's June 25th. It's 4.15, just like it is today. Today's game is going to be at 4.15, I believe. Tomorrow's game on Saturday, 4.15 at Pittsburgh. Right-hander Kenta Maeda, who's 6-4 and four now with a 2.64 ERA. He's going up against the Pittsburgh left-hander Jeff Locke. He's 6-5 and five with a 3.44. Not a bad matchup. Fox, Big Fox TV. That means in L.A. Channel 11, probably blacked out here. But everywhere else, maybe not blacked out. We'll have to check. No, it's not blacked out. It's going to be here. Here, too. So, Big Fox nationwide, or at least in the West Coast. Sunday, June 26th, 5.05. And you know what that means. If it's a Sunday 5.05 game at Pittsburgh, and it's a big one, a big matchup here. Well, not, we don't know the matchup because it's to be determined at press time. I should look that up right now while I'm talking to you. Left-hander Clayton Kershaw is 11-1 with his 1.57 minuscule ERA. Uh, I'll look in a minute who's going up against. And, by the way, that game is going to be on ESPN. So we're going to play the outro music on ESPN's Baseball Tonight theme going out of here. But ESPN on Sunday, 5.05 game. Everybody nationwide should see that one. You can even see it if you have the app on your smartphone. If you don't have it, go download the app called Watch ESPN. If you do that, you can watch it almost anywhere in the nation, I think. Almost anywhere in the world. So we'll do that. Now, we'll probably be back on Monday, but let's tell you about the matchup anyway. Monday, June 27th, it's a 9.37 a.m. game. I'm not going to be doing a show before the afternoon, so we'll tell you about the whole series that afternoon. But Monday morning, 9.35 our time, Pittsburgh left-hander Francisco Lariano. He's 4-7 and seven with a 5.03 ERA. Not having a great season this year. We ought to be able to jump all over the guy. He's going up against our lefty, Scott Kazmir, 5-3 and three with a 4.52 ERA. He's got to hike that ERA. Uh, actually, he's got to bring it down. It's hiked up enough. He's been bringing it down, so but he's 5-3. and three. But uh, Kazmir's just got to get a hold of some... Really good command that day. He's had better command the last two starts. I think he should be doing all right. So that's a 9.35 uh, morning game, breakfast and brunch with the Dodgers on Monday. But don't forget, Big Fox on Saturday, Kenta Maeda and Jeff Locke at 4.15. And Sunday, ESPN 5.05, Clayton Kershaw. Let's look up and see whoever the uh, matchup is in that one, shall we? Let's take a look at the Dodgers uh, scoreboard right now and see if there's any uh, scheduling notes I can kind of look at here. Uh, let's go to, um, tell you what, let's go to, uh, well, they've had it in their press pass. I'll tell you what, let's vamp and I'll go to the ESPN uh, baseball site. They usually have a really good setup on ESPN in their baseball page of what the schedule is, even if the teams haven't formally announced their, their pitching rotation. So well, let's look at, let's see what they have. We were trying to look for who's going to face Clayton on Sunday. And Sunday's matchup looks like this on ESPN. And they're saying, well, let's see, it's their game. Yeah, it still says undecided there, too. So it says Clayton Kershaw for sure at 5 o'clock. We don't know. And by the way, if you're watching baseball tonight at 4.30 or 4 o'clock, they usually have a nice lead-in to the Dodgers game since it's going to be on national TV. So uh, check that out. It's going to be against Pittsburgh. Uh, Clayton Kershaw against whoever. They don't even. That's the first time I ever looked at an ESPN site, and they didn't have it four days out. That's pretty amazing. All right, that is going to more than do it. Thank you very much for watching Let's Talk Dodgers, the best, well, it's, it's, the, it's the best only and first podcast by fans, for fans of your Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, I won't be back before the rest of that series, so four games between 
you and me in the next Let's Talk Dodgers show. So don't forget to watch those two in the middle of the weekend. Anyway, I'll be back probably after Monday morning's game, Monday afternoon, to talk about that Pittsburgh series. Hopefully have some highlights, and we'll do it all again then. Have a great weekend, everybody. Come on back, pull up a chair, sit down, relax, and let's talk Dodgers on Monday after we beat up on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah. Look, Dodgers are going to win that division anyway. You better believe it. Let's take it on out with the ESPN, well, ESPN's Baseball Tonight theme. weekend, everybody, and we'll talk to you on Monday. Bye-bye. The Dodgers are going to win that division anyway. Better believe it. (laughs) So long.